Bonjour everyone, Pentuf here today for a new video in which we have the pleasure of talking about leaks, leaks once again, because today we're going to take a look at all the tanks being implemented in the 8.0 update. Premiums are collectible, that will hit the game pretty soon for testers and pretty much for uh, other players like me in maybe 2, 3, 4 updates, who knows. So let's not lose too much time and jump directly into it. To do this, I installed a mod that literally gives you uh, the tech tree, it's called the tech tree mod update, something like that. And it allows you to see every single premium implemented by Wargaming, even the ones that are in test right now. So it could give us some pretty good things about the statistics and all. And it also allows you to realize how many premiums are in this freaking game because, oh boy, is it scary to see all those freaking tanks everywhere. So the first tank we're going to talk about is probably the TS-5, a tank destroyer, a tier 8 one from the American branch that looks like both a T-95 and a T-28 combined. What's important to notice about this tank is that when it comes to the gun, it has pretty much the same as the T-28. You have a really good damage per minute, a really good reload time, therefore this is logic. The dispersion that kind of sucks, but when equipped, I feel like it's going to be overall average. The penetration that is insane, 340, this is just ridiculous for such a tank. At tier 8, 340 millimeters, guys, you literally can go through everything and 400 alpha damage. The mobility kind of sucks, only 26 top speed. And finally, the suspensions, uh, yeah, pff, I mean, you don't have any mobility, so don't expect that tank to be kind of broken because it's not going to be the case. This should be featured around uh, the Independence Day for the US, so probably in July, so stay tuned. The second tank from that list is the T-34 Shielded, which is basically a more armored version of the T-34. Uh, kind of like the look, to be fair because it features the high definition graphics here you don't see them necessarily right now because the because it's a mod and the HD graphics will come later when the tank will be implemented what I have to say about this tank is that besides its armor it's not the greatest tank on the battlefield the dispersion sucks the DPM sucks uh, the average penetration is okay the average damage is okay as well but you have eight degrees of gun depression eight degrees of gun depression on something oh wait never mind uh, where is it where is it eight degrees of and the pressure on something like this is kind of cool in my opinion and all that spaced armor everywhere will probably allow you to bounce a couple of shells inside scrape only because as you can see at the front you don't have any at all so this is uh, the premium version of the t34 tier 5 as always and for the rest it seems like even with the spaced armor the main armament is not that good because at the front you only have 45 millimeters of road uh, turret armor but in my opinion the this those statistics will not take into consideration the spaced armor so in fact it's probably going to be a little bit more next we have the long-awaited object 907 we don't know yet if that tank is going to be implemented uh, in crates or if it's going to be in a mission set made by wargaming maybe in the future all i can tell you about that tank is that it's a mix between an object 140 and the leo one because it features the exact same mobility as an object 140 maybe a a little bit better but when it comes to the gun it's pretty similar to the leo one because they have pretty much the exact same dpm but unlike the leo one this one can actually not that much but bounce some shots on the turret let me show you what i mean by that when you take a look at the dpm it's 3k based without anything equipped so when you equip it you can climb up to probably 3.4k something like that the gun dispersion is going to be really good as well because uh, i want to remind you that all of those are stock values which implies that when you equip equip your tank properly you can lower it down quite a lot using provisions etc so yeah the gun on that thing is pretty deadly probably the best gun beside the t22 medium at tier 10 when it comes to russians and yeah average penetration kind of sucks so you will have to play that tank using calibrated shell as you can see only 240 millimeters of penetration with your regular shells and 300 with your gold shell this is definitely not enough to go through most of the heavies at tier 10 for the average damage 310 that's logic that's a 100 millimeter gun and for the rest, yeah, don't expect that tank to be broken when it comes to the armor because the main uh, the main armor on the turret is only 208 and this is definitely not going to do the job. And for the rest, that tank is pretty exposed. I'm going to show you. Uh, it's pretty exposed to Amarag because they are located here and here. So be careful what you're doing with it. For the rest, the mobility, as I told you, really good, 60 km per hour, and the traverse speed that is really good as well. This tank is made for either sniping in second line or trying to brawl uh, in the first line as long as you have people taking shots for you. 
Now let's take a look at the Panzer IV Gargoyle. This is the tank that is going to be featured in an event that is soon going to come. And it's basically a reskin Panzer IV H. It's a collectible. And what's interesting to notice is that it has a derp gun. But we already talked about that tank. I did a full video on it. All I want you to understand is that it has a derp gun that doesn't have the best penetration. As you can see, only 95. The average damage being 280 with your regular shell and 250 with your heat shell. And most of the time, you are going to play with heat shell because otherwise you are not going to penetrate anything maybe if you're playing against tier 4 yeah but otherwise i don't think so for the rest of the tank uh, pretty good values i mean it's a panzer so it features the mobility of any traditional panzer from tier 1 to tier 5 so nothing to be excited about but nothing to stab in the back as well so yeah this is pretty much the tank everybody will be able to get for free because to get it you will only need to get 20 high caliber metal or something like that it's either 20 high caliber metal or a total of 20 of high caliber metal warrior metal and other stuff that i don't remember exactly but yeah an easy target now let's talk about another tier 10 the Kampfpanzer from Germany all I have to say about this tank is that it sucks it's been two times in testing the first time it was horrible the second time Wargaming buffed it a little bit but it's still horrible the only thing that tank features that is really really good is the DPM because the base DPM without anything equipped is 3.2k which implies that when you equip it properly you have yourself one uh, no not one the best DPM out of all the mediums at tier 10 and of course if Wargaming intended to do something like that on the Kampfpanzer 50 ton they have to decrease its statistics on other fields and they did that on the armor because that thing is literally impossible not to penetrate literally uh, it doesn't matter where you're shooting and your average penetration is not that bad with your regular shells but with your heat shell it kind of sucks so I'm guessing with this tank you will have to play with calibrated shell same as the 907 but not necessarily for the same reasons for the average damage 310 because you have a 105 and not a 100 millimeter like the 907 and the gun turn limit that is really good overall let's say that this thing is a huge gun that only waits for you to destroy everything on the battlefield but when it comes to the rest <laughs> good luck because you're gonna get completely destroyed yeah it seems like the armor on the turret is really good right 230 millimeters but i want to remind you that this is not angled at all wait i still struggle with that mod because i installed it this morning look at this 230 millimeter on something that is definitely not rounded or armored you are gonna penetrate it quite easily and as soon as you turn your turret it becomes free real estate for everybody to shoot at this is the main problem uh, of that tank but otherwise if we put that aside and if you don't really t care about the armor the rest is fine because when you take a look at the mobility it's quite the same as any other medium so i'm expecting that tank to possibly be good on the battlefield as long as you know how to play it because something that doesn't have any armor and can't handle any shots it's definitely not made for new players let's continue with the second reward of the blitz anniversary which is the cone sponsor this thing will you will be able to get it for free as long as you spend a lot of time in the game uh, that's the echoes i got from uh, people talking about wargaming etc etc or data miners so yeah don't expect that thing to be easy to get unlike the panzer 4 gargoyle and all i have to say about it is that it's a worse ru but i like a really worse ru it's not going to be the equivalent of the ru at tier 7 it's a german light tank but we already talked about it on the channel the gun dispersion is really good the dpm is uh, average i would say for its tier but still this is really a nice tank for people that know what they're doing because as always light tanks are not made for new players for the average damage it's fine as well 225 because if i'm not mistaken it features kind of the exact same gun uh, as the one we have on the ru with uh, some little subtilities or things like that that are differing but for the rest yeah everything is fine average penetration good average damage good uh, dpm average uh, i'm gonna stop here but 10 degrees of gun depression and this is where things are getting interesting with this thing because 10 degrees of gun depression on something like that is quite juicy because it will allow you to be quite versatile on every single terrain you encounter ridge lines etc and this is something in extremely important for light tanks to be able to spot but also deal damage at the same time for the rest it's a light tank so don't expect any armor and the engine is really good because look at the top speed 70 kilometers per hour it's going to be the exact same as the ru when it comes to the mob to the mobility and it's welcome now let's talk about the july battle pass called blitz 9000 this is a really weird looking hellcat with a open roof uh yeah that's just weird at this point i don't really know how to mention that tank what to say it looks like maybe robocop or terminator something like that i don't really know but for the statistics i'm really disappointed just take a look at this the dpm 1.5k damage okay uh 8.8 8 seconds of 
reload, the average penetration that is good, and the average damage that is good. Eight degrees of gun depression, that is fine. But yeah, take a look at this, okay? Keep in mind, it has 1.5k DPM, all right? We have 1.5k DPM, but when we take the regular Hellcat, you're going to see how much of a difference it makes because those tanks are pretty much the exact same. But here, yeah, you have nearly one, no, you have one thousand more dpm on the tech tree version so is it worth it to get the blitz 9000 i don't think so i don't know if wargaming is going to do something about it because for the moment it seems like they mis they have mistaken the statistics for the super hellcat but uh, no not the super hellcat never mind the the blitz 9000 because it's really weird that wargaming went for something like that maybe it's extremely armored which doesn't seem to be the case because when you take a look at the armor profile it doesn't say that you have any armor i mean yeah no 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 it doesn't have armor at all look at this 76 uh, millimeters at the front, 50 on the hull. So if I'm if I'm understanding what Wargaming did here, they removed the DPM that made the Hellcat so popular among players to put some armor that is going to be completely useless on the Blitz 9000. So don't expect that tank to be good. For the rest, it has the same statistics as the Hellcat. You get a great top speed, you have a fully traversable turret, etc. But yeah, with a DPM like that, it's definitely not worth it. Just for the pleasure, let's take a look at the Super Hellcat that should come with high definition graphics the day it's released. I don't really know the release date of that tank. All I can tell you is that it's sexy and at least here Wargaming did not destroy the DPM because it's a little bit weird but let's say that it's gonna have a little bit more DPM than the regular Hellcat. Is it gonna be enough to make it competitive at tier 7? Definitely yes. I'm expecting that thing to be not necessarily broken in the hands of everybody but this is the kind of tank that will be broken in the hands of good players and this is exactly what we expect from Wargaming tanks that are depending on skill, that are skill based this is the exact type of tank that is skill based so yeah i'm expecting it uh really i'm waiting for that tank average penetration really good i'm, I'm gonna say gun overall extremely good and the rest no armor and copy past of the Hellcat at tier 6 with a little bit better a little bit of a better mobility because you can climb up to 65 kilometers per hour so yeah that thing is going to be quite deadly on the battlefield for people that know what they're doing a tank that is ready that was supposed to drop one month ago but wargaming uh, came back on their decision i don't really know why but the lt432 that looks really uh small looks shrinked i would say so yeah this is basically gonna be the brand new op light tank at tier 8 and maybe wargaming decided not to release it uh, one month ago because they wanted to work back on its statistics all i can tell you is that if we don't take into consideration the fact that the gun is definitely not the best because you only have 1.9k dpm and a really bad gun dispersion for the rest that tank is pretty good just take a look at the armor profile because this is one of the few light tanks in the game that will be able to bounce on its turret just take a look at this 100 millimeters at the front but just look at the uh, at the render on the tank just take a look at how rounded the turret is and how small it is it's going to be impossible to penetrate that or really hard if you're not using gold shell or if you don't have the best gun dispersion ever because that thing is supposed to be one of the fastest tanks at tier 8 featuring 70 kilometers per hour this is going to be crazy of course but is it necessarily Something bad, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I'm just waiting for Wargaming to do something about the armor profile. I don't know if they will, and we'll have to wait for the LT432 to be released to know. But if they don't do anything, yeah, I'm expecting that tank to be quite deadly on the battlefield. For the rest of the statistics, nothing to add, so let's go on other tanks. Let's keep going with the Bachat Bourrasque, which is basically a light tank, a broken version of a light tank, because despite how good looking it is, there is something else to add. Just take a look at this gun. It seems like Wargaming did something crucial about the gun because they made it have one of the worst DPM ever. It was supposed to be, or at least rumors were, that this tank would be completely broken, but in fact, it seems like Wargaming did something pretty original to it because they literally destroyed the dpm 1.5k damage per minute magazine reload time 22.5 seconds this is like quite a lot a bad gun dispersion a bad aiming time and shell reload time two seconds for two shells in the magazine so a total of 24.5 seconds for you to unleash only 640 alpha damage this is going to be terrifying because it me it means that this tank when it comes to the dpm is going to be pretty useless so i'm going to wait for wargaming to 
to implement that tank, we are going to see how it renders, but I think Wargaming will buff a little bit the DPM, maybe to 1.9k or something like that to make it competitive with other mediums of the same tier. Otherwise, I don't feel like it's useful to go for this tank, literally. The average penetration is bad as well. Look at this, 190 millimeters with your regular shell and only 240 with your APCR. Uh, with your APCR, you will not struggle penetrating everything, but for your regular shells, good luck, literally good luck. On top of that, you don't have the best gun depression, only six degrees, which is kind of boring when you understand that this tank is meant to be quite fast on the battlefield because you feature 60 kilometers per hour. For the rest, no armor at all. Don't expect anything to bounce on this because you are going to get surprised and probably getting wrecked. There we continue with the broken version of the AMX 5100. I don't have a clue when this tank is going to be released and it's called the Somia SM. All I can tell you is that it, it's an AMX 5100 but more armored. It features the exact same gun. It features a better turret because take a look at this 200 millimeters at the front and not angled so when angled it's even better for the hull maybe it's something important to notice the hull the hull the hull where is it yeah 155 millimeters but not angled so just imagine as you take a look at the angle on that tank you are going to be able to bounce quite a lot and for the rest yeah you sacrifice a little bit of mobility compared to the amx 5100 because your top speed here is 40 to be able to bounce some shells so yeah it's definitely going to destroy the purpose of the amx 5100 on the battle Bretagne Panther, guys. This is a brand new French tank and it's just a VK... Uh, wait. Uh, I, I forgot the exact name of the tank. Let me let me just take a look. This is basically, yeah, the VK3202M. This is this tank, exactly the same, but that features a Bretagne Cabot. That's it. That's literally what this tank is, so I'm not gonna bother. It's gonna be a Panther, but one tier below and a little bit worse, obviously. And uh, and yeah, that's it. Gotta, gotta say, the legendary camo for once looks historical, and I truly love it with the French flag everywhere. This is just sexy. Finally, and uh, finally, not finally, because we still have two tanks to talk about. There is the Pudel. This is the exact same tank as the one we just talked about, but made uh, Polish, literally. It's the exact same tank, so I'm not gonna bother anymore. Then we have this it was supposed to be released two months ago but wargaming came back on their decision and decided not to drop it i don't know when it's gonna come literally i don't have a clue all i can tell you about this tank is that it's definitely gonna be worth it because the auto loader on that thing is just amazing 1.9k dpm that is really good for an auto loader magazine reload time 17 seconds that you can lower down a little bit using provisions 1.5 seconds per uh, of reload between shells and three shells in the magazine for a total of 660 alpha damage this is definitely going to be worth it and it also features a really good penetration because when you're using calibrated shell on auto loaders it climbs up to more than 15 percent more and yeah here it's definitely going to be in interesting to get that tank in your garage it also features a great mobility 50 kilometers per hour but no armor at all so be careful this is going to be a tank made for good players only and to finish guys a tank that we have been waiting for at least one or two years by now the 50 tp prototype we don't really know what's happening we don't know what wargaming is doing with it and hopefully they will re release it sooner or later all i can tell you is that if this thing comes in the shop it's going to be a pretty good tank because the average penetration is great the gun dispersion is great one thing that sucks i would say is the dpm of that thing because it reloads in around 12.2 seconds but if you use it properly using the right equipment etc you can climb it up a little bit and it's going to make it interesting so yeah i'm expecting the 50 prototype to be quite a good tank at tier 9 and obviously when it's going to be released you're going to love it because take a look at the frontal main armament of that thing 270 millimeters of road turret armor not even angled and on top of that the rest of the of the hold that is quite angled so yeah expect that thing to be really good by the way for those of you interested this is the weak spot on this tank you will have to shoot here or here here it works as well or the cupola but it's really hard to get the cupola but that's it this tank looks sexy and i'm just waiting for it because it's going to be one of the few polish tanks in the game and i think polish lines are welcome but maybe what you mean is just keeping that tank for the release of the 60 tp that will maybe come this year or next year we'll have to wait finally to finish ae phase one an american tier 9 tank and probably the best tier 9 to be ever released by Wargaming if it comes in its current state because Wargaming put it back in test because it was too broken. 
The DPM is fine. The gun dispersion is not the best, but it's going to do the job. Your average penetration is great. Your average damage is good. 10 degrees of gun depression. So yeah, I think by now you understand how deadly it is. Only 180 millimeters on the main armament of the thing, but it's not a problem because take a look at how rounded it is. It's so angled that you can you can literally... It's impossible to penetrate that area, if, except if you shoot at the cupola, but it's not going to happen, let's be honest. For the rest, mm, for the rest, for the rest, what do I have to say? It doesn't go as fast as the 50 TP prototype type obviously because this one the AE phase one is really really big and really really slow but is it a problem when you have one of the greatest turrets at tier 9 I don't think so so yeah expect that thing to be broken when it's about to be released but for the moment we don't have any information one last thing to notice about it it has two tracks on each side and I think it looks pretty cool and I'm definitely looking forward to see how it will render with the suspension system Wargaming implemented Ah, we did it, guys. We talked about all the tanks being in test, tested by Wargaming, waiting to be released, etc. We have nothing else to say. If you enjoyed, feel free to subscribe, like, and share. And I'm going to see you soon for a new video. Bye.